Hey everyone, this is Ghost of Gamers, and I'm uh, here on day four of Intel Extreme Masters World Championship, and I'm here with uh, the top laner of SK Gaming, Kevin. Uh, how are you guys doing? You guys just, uh, you know, dropped out yesterday, but you had a really long week at the Super Week of LCS, and coming into here, do you think that really affected your guys' play? Just, just so many straight games of League of Legends tournaments? Yeah, that affected us pretty a lot, actually a lot, because um, the Super Week was pretty tough. We had to prepare um, at least five days before, so we trained like 10 hours a day. Um, played Super Week and came burned out a bit um, into the seabed. Um, we couldn't train that much because uh, there weren't actually a lot of teams to scrim against. So, um, yeah, it affected us actually a bit. Do you think that the teams that weren't in the LCS had a huge advantage because of how much extra time they had to study their opponents here? I think they do, especially like um, the Europe teams like um, Annexus, Mim, uh, Mitty Makers, sorry. Um, so they kind of can watch every LCS and um, see how we play, how we do our wards, how we, um, our jungle route and stuff. So I think um, they got an advantage over us because um, we just can't prepare them that good. Um, we got no scrims of them, we can't see replays of them, so yeah. Now, despite the IEM results, you guys have actually been doing really well in the LCS. So, uh, like, do you think it's just the roster is really good right now? The, like, the change in the roster and how it's set up right now is really good? Or is it more like a change of habits that you guys have done that, like, like maybe you practice more? Like, what, what do you think really led you to get so good now after kind of like a slump in the end of Season 2? Um, I think the roster change, roster change was pretty good for us. With Fjorkbot as addition, we got um, and a candy pun, of course, um, like the old Eddie from SK. So, um, they're just great, they do a good job, they play good, um, and they are at the highest level they can be, uh, the, well, the, the LCS is right now, so um, yeah, um, of course training, like uh, constant training is like very important for us right now, um, after LCS, maybe only the Monday is free, just to, ch to chill out a bit, um, clean your head, and at Tuesday it starts again 10 hours a day, so um, that's pretty important for us right now. So even though uh, SK Gaming had Yellow Star for a while in, in season two, do you think now that Candy Pan is back on the team, uh, he clicks really well with Nif like right away, and you think that's why you guys are winning a lot more games? Yeah, that's that's a that's a main reason actually, because uh, they played like I think for two years. Um, I was with the, with them in the first team game team. Uh, we went to Dreamhack actually summer. Um, so yeah, they're just a great uh, duo. Yeah, they fit perfectly actually. All right, now with top lane, a lot of people have been returning back to the 2v2 bottom and 1v1 top. Is this just kind of like a random, like, favored thing right now? Or is there a reason for this? Because uh, almost every single game, it used to be 1v2 every single game. So uh, what do you think has changed that, that made that happen? Or is this just people adapting to something? I think people are just, um, if they pick the top lane earlier in the, in the champ select, they just think, oh, I got counter picked, I swap. Nothing more, it's like, there's like sometimes not a plan behind. They just swap the lanes and um, do the same in the jungle and stuff. So it really depends on the picks right now. If if there's a singed and he sees a Darius, for example, it's like the hardest counter pick ever. Actually, they just swap and yeah. Do you think it's more advantageous for purple sides top laner to one v two bottom because that way the AD carries don't have to deal with a double golem disadvantage? I think yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so into the LC or into the um, CBIT tournament, obviously, uh, who do you think is going to pull through and, and win all of it? In the LCS, um, I think Gambit. Oh, I meant I meant in this tournament, but LCS too, sure, yeah. Oh, okay. So um, in the LCS, um, of course, Gambit will be in the top two, and I expect us to be in the top two actually too, the second place or the first place even, because um, we just look strong in the LCS right now. Um, of course not in this t uh, tournament. I'm really sorry like, to disappoint fans of SK Gaming because we played that bad. But um, in the LCS we will go good. Now, uh, compared to preparing for maybe Season 2 World Championships or something, how long would you guys say you practice and how, how much more efficient is your practice now than it was in Season 2? Um, right now it's like uh, we train hard. Like um, everyone is playing his solo queue, for example, to train his individual skill. Um, we watch replays of ourselves after almost every game. Uh, we watch team replays, we watch enemy replays, we watch um, like everyone on himself watches the enemy top lane, the enemy jungle, and just check how he plays, how his playstyle is. Um, so this changed to season two. Season two we were like 
yeah, let's do pre-made, let's play pre-made, let's uh, prepare for our enemies, but um, we didn't improve our skills, like what we do wrong, what, um, yeah, we didn't study it actually, our opponents too. Now a big thing in, in season two was uh, w like where the Korean and Asian dominance took place, and uh, this was because they practiced a lot more, <coughs> and they uh, sorry about that, and they spent a lot of time like just just doing the things that everybody else does now actually. But even even though uh, pretty much everyone kind of practices at the same amount and everyone puts like you know their whole life into League of Legends, like the Asians are still ahead. Do you do you have any idea like why you think that they're still ahead despite everybody practicing and studying just as hard now? Uh, well, I think a big point is um, they kind of sleep, eat, and play. So they really, really, really hard um, to do that in Europe. It's like tough, and they got like way more um, people around them to to like they got people to um, to look around replays. They don't have to bother with this, like coaches and stuff. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like coaches, um, like. Um, people who does the picks, who, who watch replays from enemies and stuff, and then just tell them. So the players have to play, nothing more. And this is a huge difference, I think, to the Europe and NA scene, because we players have to watch replays too and stuff. So that affects a bit the training time, but of course we have to do it. So is this something you think the Europeans can like catch up on without all that stuff? Or do you think that the European teams are going to have to really start investing into coaches and stuff to keep on the level that like maybe World of Leader Taipei Assassins are at right now? I think um, a bit help could be not good from coaches, of course. But um, even though we need more time to, uh, to invest for watching replays and stuff, it helps our team play. So I think we are, of course, a step behind of the Koreans sometimes. But we can win versus them, like Gambit shows us. So um, there is a way. Uh, we just have to find them. So yeah, to beat the Korean and the Chinese, of course, and stuff. Now, when you guys are practicing day to day, uh, how much time would you say, like splitting? Is it like 50-50? Uh, how, how much time do you spend researching, and how much time do you spend actually practicing the game and solo queue mechanics and stuff? Okay, so our day starts around 11-12. Um, then we warm up with solo queue till three around. And then starts the the premates, the scrims around uh, four hours, around four five hours, so till uh, seven, for example. And then we study like a replays three hours, four hours sometimes. So that's actually our day almost. Okay, and uh, in season two, the North American scene was relatively weak. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching the LCS at all, but how do you how do you feel about them now that they've been a little bit more practiced and they're taking the game more seriously because they have salaries and, and whatnot? Like, do you do you think they'll actually be a contender, or do you think they'll just wither away in season three as well? Um, I watched the LCS NA, so um, I kind of know how they play, um, and I think there will be a. They, if there will be an international tournament like CBIT and what they will attend, there will be of course teams to uh, watch out. Um, ex especially Dignitas and Curse, they are really, really strong right now. Um, so they are actually at the same level as we are. Marn is keeping up actually, I, I was pretty surprised of the week. So um, I think they are a bit behind in the meter, some of the teams, but um, they, can, they can easily um, be on the same level as we are. So uh, these international tournaments, they're a lot more rare now because of the LCS and stuff, but do you think they're kind of like a burden now to the L to like your performance in LCS? Like, are they, instead of like being exciting, do you find it more like annoying and kind of a drag that you have to come out here and play, or are you still okay with it? Because I know Ocelot was tweeting last night and kind of saying that everybody just wants to go home and practice for the LCS again, so how do you feel about that? Well, I feel about it, um, of course you have to play international tournaments, but um, it's... Pr it's really tough after a super week, especially like a, a normal LCS week is like only Saturday and Sunday. That would be fine, you know. Um, but after a super week, again today, after two days, um, CBIT where we play versus the actually the best teams from the world. So um, it's really tough. But of course you have to attend. Of course you want to play this because um, it's IEM World Cham Championship, of course. So um, yeah, we're happy to attend here. Couldn't play that good as we wanted to, like we played pretty bad. So yeah, it's important to play these tournaments. It's tough to play so many days straight, so don't be so hard on yourself. Anyway, uh, before we close this out, any sponsor shout outs you want to do, or f maybe to friends and family before we, before we finish up the interview? Uh, yeah, sure, I want to uh, do a shout out to our fans, of course. Um, yeah, uh, for our new sponsors, Azubo TV and AS Rock, of course, um, for SK Gaming supporting us, and um, to my family, to my girlfriend who's supporting me really hard. I just want to say uh, I love you. 
<laughs> okay, uh, one more question actually. Uh, I just wanted to know, if, so, so the fans know, how, how do they find you on Azubu? Because a lot of people have trouble navigating it. Do you guys have like links you can give to fans at all? That Maybe because it's so hard for people to find streams on Azubu, even though it's a great streaming site right now. Um, so we couldn't uh, stream before, like um, the offi officially um, start from Azubu TV was at the first March, I believe, so we couldn't stream because we had to train and stuff, just CBIT and LCS. So um, after CBIT, the next week we'll start streaming on Azubu TV. Uh, we'll post links, of course, on Facebook and um, on the SK side, I guess. Um, so people can find us. There will be on Azubu TV, so of course, links and channels from SK. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, actually, it will be easy to find us. All right, thank you very much. That was uh, Kevin, top laner for SK Gaming. Make sure to check him out on Azubu TV after CBIT. And this is Ghost of Gamer. Stay tuned for more live coverage.